To, I mean, if you're confused about the moon theme, so I can start with that. I can show, show you something I've done. You see, it's a moon. And uh, on the inside, there's a city I made. So this is just... This, uh, why this is important model for me, it's because this is where it all started, like... Uh, where I realized that I can actually do this and I can actually make uh, uh, art, basically. And this is what I use 3D printing for. I make, uh, I make whatever I want, and uh, it's the only way I've, I've ever been able to create anything, really. I mean, I can't, draw, I can't do anything with any other kind of art form. I can do music, but then I found 3D printing and uh, 3D modeling, and uh, I, I just got stuck on it, and I've been doing it uh, as a hobby, and uh, and also I've been teaching. I've been teaching uh, classes some, and then I've been um, participating in lots of events where I tell people about 3D printing in general, like what it can be used, and uh, so my work and uh, stuff like that. And this is with the uh, school Poke, uh, which you know Pekka from. Well, I think we have both Pekka here, who got uh, got me started on this. So I started with a six-month uh, course on 3D printing at Poke, and uh, this is how it all started. But I, I got so... Uh, I got so into it during the course that I actually bought my own printer like halfway halfway through the course, at this, and uh, I just started like uh, doing it on my own time and learning on my own. I mean, at the school we uh, we learned uh, technical modeling, like making uh, so-called useful things, something stuff like uh, tools and uh, technical models need to be. Like uh, something that works basically and needs to be measured, like that it's actually actually in millimeters, it's actually right size. And this is technical modeling, which is something that I can do, but I I don't really do it on my own time because I just uh, I can't really think of anything technical. So so that's why I do art, mm -hmm. and that's why you are going to see lots of art with me. But uh, the thing you have to remember that the, anything, you're modeling anything, and you are learning how to model. So if you can make art, you can make anything else, basically, in my view. At least. Because I, I feel like making art is a lot more complicated. Uh, let's see if I can turn my camera. I can, I can show, you, show you my desk full of stuff. <laughs> So you can see some of my uh, models that I have, like, uh, I, I painted some and uh, otherwise finished and there's like a lot, so much stuff, I, yeah, you have bookshelves full of stuff and, and uh, some, some of this light, up. oh, it's so bright. This is one. Uh, okay, it's too bright for the camera, it seems. Anyway, yeah. I've uh, used lightning on lots of my models that they light up when you have light on. The legs inside, you can see some, some here, yeah. This is uh, from Lord of the Rings, it's the Doors of Durin. You can see it in the movie. And this is one, one thing I do also. I, uh, Take inspiration from uh, stuff that I like, basically, like movies, uh, books, TV shows, everything, games. It's just like a source of inspiration for me. I, I make what I want. Yeah, I can. Uh, the tower is so big; it's really. This is like the largest thing I printed because uh, I wanted to. <laughs> it's from I have this in a miniature that I made. 
like this. This is an actual tower from a uh, Jets Republic. It's a uh, it's a watchtower on top of a mountain there. It actually exists, and I saw pixels on online, and I wanted to create it, so I made a, a small version of it. And then I wanted to print it large, and this is from three pieces. Uh, it's so black, you can can you see it? How detailed it is? But yeah, it's like a, you can light it up from inside also, so I can carry it like a, with power, powerful enough legs you can create a land from this. And I, for a while I had uh, plants growing from it, but it was, uh, they didn't really take well to the transportation when I took this to events and stuff. Jukka, so when how I long does it take, Jukka? Yeah. How long does yeah. it take to model one like oh. like that that tower? It really depends. I mean, uh, if it's something new that I have never done before, I have to learn the methods how to do it. So it's, it might take longer. But if it's something I know how to do, then it, I think I can make a model in a day or two, basically. But uh, it's usually I can make the base model really fast, and then uh, when I start to add details and stuff, that's basically an endless project. So. I could do it endlessly, basically, adding details and all. It's just about how, when I know when to stop. When it comes to like uh, miniatures like this, they are like never really finished. I just keep adding details and details. The, the moon is an example of that because I. It's actually about a year when I did this the first time, and uh, I made the new version that I find much better. And. Uh, this oh it's dark can't really see it and uh, then we have also let's see if you can see it at the school we also have a, a laser printer i don't know if you can see it, all the details but it's perfectly detailed it's uh, it's a tiny version of the same model so this is made with a uh, much uh, more like newer technology. It's uh, SLA printing uh, from Resi. You can have the, the, the smallest one that you yeah. uh, show us before, a few minutes uh, yeah. before. It's uh, <clears throat> what kind of material is in in it? Uh, this one. It's uh, like a ABS or PLA or something. You mean this one, the small one? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, the small one. Yeah, uh, it's a, it's resin. It's a, it's, it's not a, like the traditional 3D printing that you make from a, this from the liquid basically that you harden with laser. So it's a completely different technique, and I don't actually know that much about it. I haven't really gotten to uh, use it yet a lot, but we did this. Uh, yeah, but example. but I see many details yeah. inside. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, it's perfectly detailed, but you can't really see it on the the camera quality isn't yeah, good yeah. enough. But I can show you a photo of it uh, when I share my screen in a moment, if I remember. And, uh, and you you, uh, you print the black one, the tower you print by the um, one piece. No, it's uh, like uh, divided it, by the part. Yeah. I, I divided this into three pieces because basically there's no point. I could do this from one piece if I had a big enough printer, but there's really no point to it because this is so easy to like uh, make a multiple piece model because they have natural seams on it on the model, so it doesn't and, actually solve. Um, if, they, if I had to, yeah. Uh, what is your print uh, print space for, for in your printer? Uh, I my second printer is 30 centimeters high. So I can do like a, I think something like this mm -hmm. in it if I wanted to. Uh. It's uh, actually uh, even if it's a large printer, it's basically cheap. I think I paid uh, 300 euros for it, so it's like a really really cheap one. But it's it can do stuff like this easily. For printer, it, or it's for not material? expensive. You the mean printer? printer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not, the material is like uh, one kilogram of it costs about uh, twenty euros. So something mm -hmm. like the tower would cost maybe five euros because it's so 
And, uh, and what kind of material do you use to print the tower? Yeah, it's PLA plastic. PLA. PLA is uh, it's the most widely used because it's uh, it's easy. It's the easiest material and it's also uh, biodegradable. So it can be recycled and it can be composted in. Uh, it, it doesn't compost on its own, but it can be composted in an uh, industrial setting. Like uh, I think it requires like 250 degrees for a while, and then it actually composts. So it, it's not the kind of plastic that uh, mm -hmm. we worry about that much these days. Like we worry about the uh, seas getting full of plastic, and you might think that uh, you have 3D printing that it's going to create more and more plastic. That is a problem, but it's actually part of the solution in my mind. And do you do you have uh, hmm? some kind of uh, preprint, like uh, some kind of stuff? Did you go to the trash uh, before you print that kind of uh, the the real one? I'm not sure what you mean. Yeah, how many um, do you um, if you print that kind of tower that we yeah. see a few minutes ago? Yeah. Uh, yeah. How many material do you do you take to the trash? Or none. You, none. That's the point. That's what the, the point I was getting to. The, that's the one of the beauties in 3D printing because this is uh, 3D printing is actually a nickname for the technology that's called additive manufacturing. So it means that you use the material that it needs only, nothing else. So if you use a more traditional way of make, making something like this, you would uh, like uh, like machining. You would actually Got this from a piece, and then you would have grass, yeah. But on this, there's none. There's one. Uh, uh, some models actually do need it for a bit, like. Uh, hmm, how do I explain it? I have, for example, this. I don't have the original picture, but for uh, like uh, 3D printing, cannot cannot. Print on like uh, on empty space. You have to have something under it always. So on model like this, where this elbow basically would be in the air, and because the print consists from layers and starts from the ground up, on this part you need to have a temporary material that you that stress that you take off after the print. So it's a really tiny amount. So for a model this size, you would use this much of uh, extra basically. But, uh, you mean uh, extra layers, like uh, like like a extra, stand like a... Uh, extra. It's called a support structure. So basically, it would be just something like uh, basically this would need something here like this, so that you can actually create it, and then you take it away afterwards. So it's I, I just mean it's really small amount of waste, even on models like this. And it's always about the, like the orientation. So this work like this size up. But it wouldn't work like uh, if it was this size up, this way up. It, you would need support structures under it, and that would be a waste. Mm -hmm. uh, you, Patrick, uh, have a question for you. How many models did you have done? You? How many of my own? Uh, <laughs> that's a good question. I think it's up closing to closing to hundred by now. That I have released. That's the yeah. I didn't get that to that yet. What I also do is all of my models I release them on the internet because that's basically how this 3D printing community is built. That we share stuff. That everyone shares stuff either free or you ask some price for it, which I have done for a couple of my models basically. So I can actually afford to do this because I wanted to buy a new printer and stuff like that. So I have tried to sell it also and. It's been quite successful, actually. But most of my models are free to download, like the moon. And the moon is the why the moon is so important is that it's the first of and still the my most popular model when I share it on the online. So I this model has uh, tens of thousands of downloads and hundreds of thousands of people have seen it. So it's uh, it, numbers like that I never really imagined I would uh, get with my work and. Uh, it's also the model why I uh, got some attention from uh, printer manufacturers and material manufacturers, and I actually don't pay for my own material anymore. I get them uh, free from uh, 
uh, from a filament. It's called filament, the material. And from the manufacturer, I get uh, all of it for free. And all I have to do is mention their name when I post pictures of the models, which I'm glad to do because they actually make really good filament, like like the tower, for example. It's a bit special. Uh, it, it, nothing else special on it, but the looks. It's, it has a bit of a glitter in it. I don't know if you can see it. It has a nice sign on it. But it's it's PLA and it's nothing special otherwise. And what kind of printer I have? Uh, the first one I bought two years ago. The one I started with was uh, called the Flashforge Creator Pro. It's uh, it costs me it cost me 1,200 euros. So it was <laughs> it was a quite a big investment for someone basically without a job at the time. So I, but I had savings and I wanted to buy it, so I bought it and it's been good and it still works. And then uh, during Christmas, around Christmas time, I bought the second one, the bigger one, and it was really, it's Creality CR10. It's really popular because it's so cheap and good and big. Basically, it has all those things you might want as a hobbyist. And yeah, for all of these models, I think I really started doing them a year ago because I, I can say it, uh, this is one year old now. Yeah, it was made in April 2017. So basically everything else I made since then. So with a couple of exceptions, I think this lighthouse was uh, uh, one of my first ones. Yeah. And so I have, I think I have learned a lot since then. Like, uh, I think one of my favorite models is this floating island I did. And this is, this I have painted and I, so it's really properly finished. I really like, like stuff like this. And, and uh, uh, this is some kind of painting, not, uh, not material like a uh, green PLA or uh, brown PLA. Uh, you're a painter. Yeah, I, I use kind of. yeah, I, yeah, I use uh, acrylic paints. So basically, it's just your standard paints for modeling. And uh, uh, yeah, it's nothing really special. But like miniature paints, they are a bit better. But you can use any kind of paints basically to finish this. Mm -hmm. Like and it's it's plastic, so you can use anything that uh, it's just worked for plastic after you have printed it. So there's nothing really special. And uh, you show us uh, the statue, the, the the girl or the woman. Uh, yeah. Behind you, how many time you designed this, or how many time you designed? Uh, well, uh, kind of model? Uh, yeah. on this I cheered a bit because this is based on a game, so it uh, it exists in the game, so I don't I didn't have to design uh, the shape of it basically, but I have to do the printable model, which took me it didn't take me more than a day or two. And then I had to make the face. It didn't have a face. I had to make the crown and I had to make all the details on it. So it was a lot of work, but it's still, uh, it's not my design basically. So I don't really saw it as mine in that sense because it's, it's uh, like a fan product for, for a game. Uh, Skyrim, it's a very popular game. So I wanted to make something from it. And, uh, uh, yeah, I have so many things. I don't know what to even show you. This is my latest latest thing. It's uh, something I had just a random idea. I wanted to make an aqueduct, and it's uh, but the colors don't really show on the camera. But it's it's a bit more colorful than you can see. But it's I haven't released this yet. I don't really know where I will release it yet. I don't really. Yeah. And do you have um, some kind of model that we can use in our classroom for, uh, for example, like uh, for um, history lesson or for, I don't know, critics mm. or something like that? Or you design something like that? Mm, I don't know. Well, this is basically, this tower is, because it's a real tower, it, it can be used as an example of a miniature you can make. And, uh, and then. But as I said, lots of my stuff is basically artsy stuff and uh, uh, stuff that you might use to test your printer because that's what I do also to test what the printer can do, what it's capable of. But 
if you want to use any of these models, you can, of course. But uh, these are um, these are all all at least my favorite ones are, are stuff like this. Like this one has lights inside of it. It's Jukka, I think yeah. that uh, um, that that painting stuff could be done in a school because I, I think that, uh, as you said, uh, it's more like art, and they mm -hmm. people people teach art. Yeah, and, yeah. And even there's a model; uh, those students that print that stuff, they mm -hmm. can paint it any way they like it. Yeah, yeah, of course, and. Uh, you can also edit the model the way you like it if you want to add something on it or you want to make a different environment for it or you can uh, mm, well, you can do whatever you have like it's all up to your ima imagination what you can do with this but, uh, uh, but it's just that I do art it doesn't mean everyone has to do art but art is like one way to get, I found that art is a really good way to get people interested in the technology. Like when I'm doing events at conventions and stuff and I have this table full of models like this and people stop and they ask that how it, how is this done and uh, they don't you always even understand that this can be done with 3D printer. That when I tell them that I do this at home, I can create this stuff at home with uh, from the ground up, everything from like from nothing to a finished product in home. Then I think that's one of the most important uh, aspects of 3D printing as a hobby. I mean, of course, I mean printers from like metal printers, steel printers, those exist for an industrial setting that you can actually you they actually make car parts and plane parts that, with machines that cost like uh, millions of euros. So. It's not in my reach to actually use those machines, but all these designs I do and all the designing uh, skill I have can be applied to any kind of printer. Even if it costs uh, one million euros, I could use my ski the skills I've learned. I can use that with those printers or in the future with what, whatever kind of printers we have in 10 years, it might be something even more amazing. That I can even think of But I don't think the modeling process is going to change. So uh, that's why I use uh, my interests and hobbies to, as a way to learn how to model. And uh, Yukka, what, uh, what do you recommend for a start, for a beginning? for 3D print for for school for uh, I don't know um, the cheapest one or the the, the budget one like a, a printer a, yeah. yeah like a cheap and good yeah for for starting well it, it it depends a bit on what kind of class it if it's if it's a class of like a, like a technical class then you might go with a cheaper one and learn how to use it <laughs> like but if it's like more like an art yeah, art class, yeah. then you might want to use more money to get a printer that's easier to use and works better with less uh, fiddling with it. Like if you don't have time to or skill to technical skill as much, and you might want to buy like an Ultimaker or something like that, which costs like two to three thousand, I think. But uh, I think around one thousand euros is a really good point to buy a printer that's pretty easy to use and pretty reliable. But mostly, what limits the uh, what you pay for is the size also that if you want a big printer you do have to pay more and but there are some exceptions like the, the one I have that's pretty cheap and big. Moon City to print I think this takes like 12 hours to print yeah that's a 3D printing is not really fast in that sense that if you want to create uh, like lots of stuff if you had to create like 10 of these it would be uh, 120 hours and that's insane amount of time but in a, in the sense that I if I design something like this I have it on my computer screen and I get it as a physical of it in my hand in 12 hours then I, that's like an amazing speed for me at least but, and it's so cheap also because I think as material wise this is maybe two euros if even that much it doesn't wait a lot and what kind of material uh, it be this is a PLA also, and I, I think most of my stuff is PLA plastic. So, okay. And how many how many hours do you design this uh, Moon City? Uh, it, from it, from the I, I don't it's know. Hard I don't know. The, 
Yeah. And the second question is, uh, uh, where and when do you have an uh, idea what would you print? Oh, how do you mean? When I have idea? Uh, yeah, idea. When? Yeah. Where do you get the idea? Okay, right now, uh, today I will print oh, some kind uh, of uh, stuff yeah. from, um, I don't know, from Hobbit or something <laughs> like that. Yeah. Well, it really depends. I, 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 I've find that I get my best ideas in the morning, that like uh, when I wake up I might have an idea in my head, basically. But, but yeah, it's a good point to, to bring up, because this way of create, creating stuff, it's, uh, I mean, it's so fast in that sense that if I get an idea in the morning, I might have a, a physical object in my hand during the same day. So, I mean, if people talk about, like, people often tell me that it's magic or that, and then in that sense, it's kind of is magic that you can get your idea out of your head to your hand as a physical object in a, that uh, time frame. And not only that, uh, that you actually have made it and you can send it to anyone in the world who has a 3D printer and they, they can make the same thing. So stuff from your head to your ideas, you can keep them all around the world really easily. And I think I find that so amazing because I love the community that everyone shares their things and the internet is full of free models you can download and print and uh, and people do that and then that's how I started. I think the first year when I had the printer I only printed stuff that others made and slowly I just learned to make my own. And that's these days it's mostly I don't really have time to print other people's stuff but I do sometimes. Okay. Could you show us something that um, how can uh, how do you modeling uh, your your uh, your yeah products? Can you see my screen? No. You should see an empty desktop right now. Is it working? Nope. No. Oh, right now it's work. Oh, it's... Mm, it says it's working. You are presenting primary monitor. It's loading. Yeah. I hope my internet is fast enough for this. You see it? Yeah. Yeah, we showed the free decals. Yes. Yeah. So I, I, these are two programs I use the most. There's a Blender, which is a free one. Um, it doesn't cost anything to use, and but the downside is that it's really complicated to learn because of the interface. It's you might see it's really complex looking, and it, it does lots of things very differently than any other program. So. I might. Uh, I use this to make uh, models that are a bit more technical, but not like a, not like a CAD software where you enter measurements and stuff. You just it, this is more free from free modeling, but it's still uh, uh, still a bit more technical. So you can see. It, it, this is the most traditional way to read a model. So you see. Polygons, you can see the object that it consists of these parts, like uh, you can edit it on this level, like the lowest possible level. Right, so it's just different kind of tools on this. And you start to create stuff. And uh, this is a really might look really complex, but it's uh, one of the simplest ways to start modeling.
Let's say I wanted to make a tower, it would be the, uh, this would be a uh, pretty easy tool to make something like this. And then I have a, I have set these programs to work together. So I can take this model to this program. No, not too big. And this software is not free, but it's uh, really cheap. You can get um, it for like 50 euros, so it's not really expensive. And you can try it for free for uh, 30 days also. So you can use, I use the other program to make uh, the face models, and then I can use this program to place them and uh, combine them. It, it's really powerful in that. And then I can uh, this program works and why you can create uh, artistic stuff on this. You can just start like painting on the model and creating a 3D shape like this. And you can also you can edit it really freely. So this is uh, the absolutely the freest way to make 3D models. No, it's a bit slow, no. Let's try the other one. And you can use... Oh, it's so many different tools. And then you can... You can make shapes with this program too, but they're really basic, like, like you have circles cubes, and uh, really just basic models. So this is why I need the other program also, because this only, only makes like spheres and stuff like this. But this also works like uh, Photoshop would work, or any other program that you have layers, that these models are on different layers, so when I edit this Ground part, it only edits that and it doesn't touch the other model at all. I don't really, I, I haven't planned to what I'm making right now, so I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm just showing you some examples of the process. are just to make it easier to model, they don't actually matter in the printing, because pr printing is, with these kind of printers, the printer print is always just one color. So you can see how free this is, you don't have to have any technical knowledge, you just have to be able to rotate the scene in deep in uh, three dimensions, and then you can uh, just draw on it with different kinds of tools. You can make uh, add stuff or you can carve stuff out, move the surface freely, and you can uh, Increases and more, more and more details. And this is what I meant earlier when I said it's endless process that I could really do this endlessly and keep making it uh, more and more detailed. But it's kind of wasted on the, these kind of printers I have. But with a better kind of printer, you might actually be able to print all of the details. And 
uh, one thing I also do is uh, I don't really plan ahead like you can see as I start doing and then I can I try different colors and what kind of environment it would be I don't really know what this would be yet the tower is a bit different I'm gonna make a bit more fun towers It looks like like from Fly me to the moon Let me play among the stars Let me see what spring is like on Jupiter and Mars.